What is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given and today we are going to be taking a look at a Pan's Shadow game where I force slay. And I've said this a ton of times before, but for my money, this is how you play Pan Shadow. And for most heroes, uh, definitely some of the stronger heroes, they are strong because they are flexible. Uh, notably, Zelhua and Wonder Waddle are really strong because there's a lot of things that you can do with that hero. And Pan Shadow, I think, is secretly one of the best heroes in the game, but it's not strong because it's flexible. It is strong because you should be forcing Slay every single time. I locked onto that first shot because it had a pair in it that we could pick up, and uh, I knew we were going to be able to pick up two units because we were playing up against Share Bear. So I figured this would give us a strong enough start here. Could have led with the crafty and we'd have three additional life points, but you know, that's gonna happen. By the way, uh, no camera today. I just don't have the time to set everything up. I thought or was hoping that I was gonna be able to put out a patch review today. Uh, at the time of recording this, the new patch still isn't out yet. So hopefully a new patch review will be able to uh, come out tomorrow, depending on when that comes out for everybody. Uh, so something to look forward to, but this is something that I think is gonna be pretty consistent regardless of whether or not we get a new patch. And that is Pan Shadow because I play Pan Shadow the same regardless every single game. Definitely want to pick up these crafties here. That'll give us a bigger crafty. And when I look at these three treasures, all I'm thinking about, okay, well, none of these are bounty board. I snap take a bounty board every time, but Hermes boots can potentially work in a slay comp. It, it'll help you just get that first attack, which can help you get some slays before your opponent does. And then I do lock onto this shop. Uh, we're light on the amount of units that we're currently playing, only playing three units right now. So if we can pick up two more units slightly cheaper, I feel like that might be worthwhile. Uh, but I think I don't actually even wind up picking them up. So this could have definitely been a mistake here. We are going to almost be strong enough to get the win against Pup, but we will. We're just taking a little, little bit of damage, like every fight here. And uh, that's going to be pretty consistent. But we get to make a pretty nice play here, all things considered. I go for the Genie's Wish. I felt like it looked nice on the board. Could have taken the Crafty plus the uh, Darkwood Creeper, but like Darkwood Creeper isn't that great on this board anyways. So go for the Genie's Wish and find ourselves a Wish Upon a Star. So at this point, probably just taking the Crafty and then uh, picking up the two one ones here. And I'll backline the Poliwoggle. feel like that probably gives it a better chance to slay. Um, and uh, hopefully we can win with this Wish Upon a Star. But if we don't, not a huge deal. It'll still make us level four a little bit quicker. Uh, so that is going to be nice regardless. And then we'll see what Slay pieces we can pick up later on into this game. So Pan Shadow does not have the highest average placement. It's, it's actually one of the weaker heroes when you look at average performance on Pan Shadow. But when you look at first place finishes, and this this does make some sense, by the way, we are going to slay with Polywoggle by putting it in the back, so pretty sweet. I will emote for that one. And we also win with the Wish Upon a Star. So pretty great stuff all around. Really could not have had that combat go any better, unless, of course, we actually Polywoggled into something relevant instead of just a 2-2. Uh, I would have taken any of these other units in the shop over a 2-2 time flies when we're not even going to be able to fill our board here. So this is one of the awkward things with XP on Pan Shadow is we've got six gold and we can only pick up one of these things unless we sell off like Minotaur. Uh, the one thing I'm thinking here is maybe if we shard this Lonely, we can find another Minotaur, which could be kind of interesting. We could skip the treasure and then pick up two units, but that's not gonna be what happens. So I'm gonna take the Lightning Dragon and then roll and hope that we can find a River Wish Mermaid. It's basically all that I'm looking for when I'm playing Pan Shadow. Medusa is good, especially with the boots. The pair of Greedies is good, but I think I'm gonna play it a little bit more greedy even and just continually roll for River Wish Mermaids. And 
we are XP ahead of the rest of the lobby. Basically, next turn with seven gold, we either sell our time flies and pick up two units, or we roll three times and find a river wash mermaid. Really, really unlucky combat here that we get absolutely wrecked by the falling stars from the Mad Catter. So going to take a little bit of damage there down to 29, and you'll see the XP not really working out great for us at the moment, but I still won't complain. Um, Sporko is definitely a good card to pick up here. We could use it to support the Lesser Crafty and the Kitty Cup Purse, but... I think I'm gonna settle for Nutcracker. Um, I, I figured I'd throw in one more roll for Lightning Dragons or River Wish Mermaids, but I think I am gonna settle for Nutcracker and then I will cast this for Glory to potentially try to grab another unit for free. And then next turn we will have eight gold. We could throw in two rolls if we're willing to sell like Time Flies and Crafty and pick up two more units. And hopefully, we can find some River Wish mermaids eventually because that is what I want to do with Pan Shadow every single game. Just while we aren't, while we are on tier four, pick up the Lightning Dragons and River Wish mermaids. While we're on tier five, pick up Lancelot, pick up Baba Yaga, and then when we are on level six, just look for Jormungans. So I think that that strategy can be pretty consistent. You've heard me talk about it a lot since basically Pan Shadow has come out. And like I said, I don't try to force comps on most heroes, but I really do think that you can get away with it on Pan Shadow. Uh, we wind up taking a little bit more damage on that one, even so, but we've got some additional gold to work with here. So we can throw in two rolls for free, and then we can even throw in some more rolls if we're willing to like sell off Crafty. Um, definitely don't want to cast a Falling Stars. I'm just saying that that would be horrible if that gets cast against us. And then we actually get a free roll and still don't really find anything, unfortunately. So wind up basically just rolling down here. Um, at this point, I could sell two things for Lightning Dragon. That's kind of awkward at this point. I, I really just want to roll, use my last two gold to try to find a River Wish Mermaid before we hit 5.0. And unfortunately, I don't get there. So we wind up getting pretty unlucky in this game as a whole, I would say. Despite the fact that we get the Wish Upon a Star out of the Genie's Wish and win that and we're up to XP on the rest of the lobby still. Um, but XP definitely comes at a cost, especially on a character like Pan Shadow, where you don't really have anything to spend your excess gold on. Uh, other than really just throwing in a bunch of rolls. I believe this is a... No, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself in uh, one of these combats here. Um, but yeah, this is um, not like the worst start in the world, but eventually we're going to have to start picking up some other units other than River Wish Mermaids because our opponents are going to be pretty strong. Um, so we will be on the lookout for that one. But doing okay for the time being we are going to potentially be able to activate the nutcracker here so that's nice um that we got we got lucky on that front we will take a little bit more damage though but we grab a tier four treasure and none of these really speak to me um well I, I won't say that. The, the Gloves of Thieving, I think, are good for the comp that I want to be in, because believe it or not, I still want to be in Slay, because I still want to try to win this game, and the only way that that is going to happen is by being in Slay. Now, I will have to just spend some time to pick up some other things here. I pick up a Monster Book, and then I'm also just going to take a Medusa, because we've got the boots, so we're going to be playing a little bit more on the scammy side of things for a moment. And then uh, I believe I'm also going to put this Crafty in now that we've picked up a second treasure. I think that that's better than just playing the Labyrinth Minotaur. But definitely an awkward start. I don't even really feel like I can grab the Baba Yaga because the we don't have the River Wish Mermaid that we're actually slaying with anything at this point. So we really need to find this River Wash Mermaid well, yesterday, but we need to find it next turn, and I'm basically just banking on that, because uh, if that happens, I think that we can still win this game, just because we are going to have so much 
so many good shops and we're going to be able to find exactly what we need eventually eventually the benefit of pan shadow is that you should be able to force comps with more regularity and the reason that i like slay comps is there is a sense of progression you get the lightning dragons you get the river wash mermaids then you get the baba yagas you start finding the treasures maybe you pick up the lance at some point and it does kind of have a smooth progression curve to it there are some other sweet comps that you can play on pan shadow obviously trees you can pick all of those up with pan shadow but find that when you're doing that you're just kind of sitting around twiddling your fingers and then eventually picking up some trees whereas slay works a whole lot better because you get to be scaling it all throughout the mid game you're not just jumping into it all of the sudden so in my experience that is the strongest thing that you can do on pan shadow but I am going to see if we can find anything else strong to do and pick up a pair of Nyan Sea Terrors here and maybe that can just make our board stronger in some other ways because we're definitely needing a little bit of help. But then I see Evil Eye. Hand of Midas isn't really an option here because we're still level 5. Sword of Fire and Ice sure gives a little bit more attack to Court Wizard. Overall, just pretty meh, though, and I'm going to wind up taking an Evil Eye despite being pretty far behind and not having any supports to make use of this because I believe, and I believe I know where this game is going. Uh, this is kind of an interesting board to play. I think the correct answer is to cut the Nutcracker, uh, but then, of course, we're not playing any Royals for our Court Wizard, which is a little bit awkward, but... I think that's just what you gotta do, but now if we can find this fabled River Wish Mermaid, we are looking really, really good. We're gonna wind up stealing a Prince Arthur this time, and that triggers the Court Wizard and takes out our Medusa. So, a little bit awkward. I think we are gonna wind up taking a little bit more damage on this one by the looks of it. So, hopefully not too much damage. Yeah, I guess we just have to hit a sheep and then trade with another sheep and take 10 down to six. So things are not looking super great in this one, but I still believe, I still believe that there is something that we can put together, but it's gonna be tough. And we definitely need to find some ways to get stronger this turn. And I don't think we can really afford to take a lightning dragon either. Um, it just really makes our board a lot weaker, but we go for a shard of the Ice Queen that gives us Chupacabra, which is interesting, and it's at least another reasonably statted unit, so I do wind up picking that up, and then I roll into a Baba Yaga, and I think that we can actually do something with this. Uh, notably, we can just use this Baba Yaga to pump up both of our ranged units, and maybe, hopefully, somehow, this could be enough. Um, it's definitely a little bit on the weaker side for this point in the game, but it's at least something. Gonna be backlining the Medusa so that way we can frontline this Lightning Dragon so that way Choop is pumping up two different supports and we get first attack. So I do think, you know, Lightning Dragons, whatever, but Choop should be able to get first attack and then slay, and then that'll give both of the supports behind it, or both of the ranged units behind it, uh, a decent amount of attack, which could potentially help carry us in this fight. But the important thing here is actually the Gloves of Thieving steals us a River Wish Mermaid, and Lightning Dragon maybe should have just played two of them because I wasn't thinking of just how good Lightning Dragon is against Pup. It's actually going to do an incredible amount of work for us because it allows us to take out one of their support units and then uh, two of their units are then getting a whole bunch less stats. And from there, a ranged Baba Yaga is actually enough that we tie the combat and don't die. And now we've got a River Wish Mermaid. So things are actually definitely looking up for the first time this game, but we're so far behind that I don't really think that we can take Lancelot. Even with the pump from the uh, Evil Eye, I just don't think that we're gonna be able to squeeze having um, 
uh, a, a, such a weak Lancelot because it's it's not going to get active anytime soon. Uh, I do consider taking some more scam units, but Lightning Dragon could be really good here considering we're only playing the one and this actually gives us Horn of Olympus. So I feel like in this game we did things backwards. Uh, we did pick up Lightning Dragons first, but we went like Lightning Dragon, then Evil Eye, then Baba Yaga, then River Wish Mermaid, then Horn. Um, so it was all a little bit silly, but now we do have a real slay comp indeed. And we've got perfect treasures, basically, because we've been setting up. Sometimes you'll play a mimic chest over the evil eye, but I like playing boots as well in a comp like this and just pumping up the whole team. Now, I didn't reconfigure my board because of the horn. So I should have put the uh, Court Wizard behind the Baba Yaga again, but it's not gonna matter because we are gonna be looking really, really strong on this fight. So that is really nice. Hopefully we can just tie it again. That is really all that I'm looking for, but our units are large enough that we are gonna be able to walk out of this one with a win even. So pretty nice stuff. And then, um, yeah, do have uh, some awkward maneuvering on the supports. And it would have been nice to have the Gloves of Thieving again for another combat, but uh, I'm not going to be too upset. And you can see why it was so hard to find a River Wish Mermaid, maybe. I mean, some of our other opponents are also playing it, but at this point, Pan Shadow, we're just rolling for Jormungand and we find it. So this is awesome. Now we actually are just, I mean, we're not quite full build. I want to replace this Court Wizard with another River Wish Mermaid, and then I want to replace the Crafty with another German again. But then after that, I'm full build. I'm keeping this Choop until the end of days. You could potentially replace the Choop with Medusa. It's not the craziest idea in the world, but the Choop will slay more. And I think it's big enough relative to its position in the lobby that we should be okay with it. So looking great on all of this stuff and uh, we're gonna roll one more time find nothing i do debate picking up the good boy because maybe we'll play up against the ghost maybe we could scale the good boy behind the choop could be fun i've always wanted to try that but not today today i'm just gonna be happy enough to get a win after forcing slay so hard and falling behind a lot because we were not able to put it together but then eventually did put it together. So let's not mess with perfection now that we have this perfect setup and we are definitely going to be big enough to be able to take out this share bear. We'll take out their ranged unit and then their other unit will crash into Jorm and we are walking away with a victory against the lobby leader. We are up against the ghost right now and I got go for masquerade ball here to see a bunch more sixes and then I believe we do find another good boy. I do toy with the idea again. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't. Um, but ultimately, it's it's just not going to be worth it. Uh, none of our units are good either. So just wind up rolling and find another Jormungand. That is absolutely fantastic. So we'll throw that in. And now we're really just looking for another Riverwish Mermaid. And then from there, maybe we'll look for more Baba Yagas and Jormungands just to get some upgraded units. But really, we're good at this point. So... I'll roll two more times and then we will take our battle up against the ghost here. Not going to pick up any of this stuff, but uh, it's great when you get to play against a real ghost as a slay comp because uh, it should be a free win and a whole bunch more free stats as well. And luckily we also did not attack into a, like if we attacked into the Romeo and then the court wizard gets to fire back, it could be just a little bit annoying, but no, we're doing good attacking into my opponent's non-royals here. And uh, yeah, just overall being very, very strong. Our Jorms are also getting a little bit of scaling and yeah, next turn we're just gonna roll for more of the same stuff. It's it's pretty basic, pretty straightforward when you are just forcing Slay on Peter Pants and uh, it basically plays itself and eventually the luck all evens out and we do find another River Wish Mermaid. I was, I was uh, fearing that we were gonna have as much trouble finding the second one as we did the first one. So we are never going to upgrade these River Wish Mermaids. We're gonna keep them unupgraded for the end of time here, but I am 
interested in upgrading Jormungand. Uh, I don't mind playing a Jormungand down for a second. Does make us a little bit weaker, but with the boots and with the Lightning Dragon, I think we're going to be okay. Soul Pack is definitely something to be a little bit concerned with. Um, but ultimately not going to be a big deal. Now, one thing I am considering here is do I want to play a second Baba Yaga? The reason being that we could play Cat's Call and then we're giving all of our cats plus 12 attack from two Baba Yaga. So that could be a reasonable bonus worth pursuing. I'm only casting Cat's Call here just to get it out of the shop uh, because we're locking onto this Jorm. But I'm thinking next turn, I will probably pick up Jorm and then of course we do get a roll or two, but I don't mind throwing in Medusa. I don't mind throwing in Nine Sea Terror. I don't mind throwing in Court Wizard. Any of those seem fine. So, uh, I, and I think that we will just be strong enough with the Jormungand and uh, the Lightning Dragon Choop combination should be good for us. So Lightning Dragon going to do some nice work here, got some scaling. It actually slays and stays, which is great news. Uh, playing up against a summons comp is uh, just really feeding frenzy for uh, a slay comp. So that is going to go pretty well for us. Only things that could go wrong would be like opponent uses a pumpkin to apple tree us and then siren steals our jormungand but even that is really really unlikely because the jormungand would grow so much after killing the apple tree that uh that is not super likely and we end up taking out medusa too that was probably a more likely way medusa takes out one and then i don't know they're, they're still not going to be able to take out the german again so we are going to walk away victorious choop double slaying and river um lightning dragon double slaying so all of our units are pretty big now lightning dragon almost in the 70s choop over 100 and taking a look at these treasures i'm just gonna skip i really like the treasures that i have i would have considered mimic chest but i really don't want to toss these boots i think that those are just super beneficial when you are on the sleigh path so gonna wind up picking up a german gand and then hercules is like an okay pickup but definitely not good enough german gand though is definitely exactly what we're looking for in this additional slot. So Pan's Shadow finally evening out here and uh, giving us something nice. I'm just looking if I can pick up both, take Baba Yaga, skip the treasure, then pick up the Jormungand, and uh, I can't. That would make me have to play down a unit, and it would also have to make me sell a unit that I don't want to sell. So I just pick up Jormungand here. I think that that is totally fine, and we're going to lead with the upgraded Jormungand, because that one can actually just have more stats to slay and help the second one. And then next turn, we're going to pick up Baba Yaga, probably skipping on that treasure too. And we play up against another summons comp. That's another reason that slay is so good, because they've made summons better. And now you just have more summons to poop on. And uh, yeah, we're just going to be really, really strong here. Nothing that my opponent's going to be able to do, especially when we take out their Echo Wood. Uh, that's going to make the rest of this combat pretty straightforward here now. So that should bring us on to the finals. I could even just skip through the rest of this combat, but we'll watch it out here. Um, yeah, next turn we're going to pick up the Baba Yaga. We'll skip that treasure, so we'll still have nine gold. And we're basically just using that nine gold to roll for a combat-relevant spell, I think, at that point. I don't think that anything else can really have a super big impact at this point in the game. But we are going to have a super big impact there with our 2500 attack Jormungand. Pretty large. Uh, let me know what is the largest Jormungan that you've ever created on the real patch. I don't want to hear about any of that beta nonsense where uh, the Jormungans can go crazy. But yeah, we're going to wind up skipping this treasure. Ambrosia does nothing for us. And then 
kidnap kind of cute, but we definitely want to just try to find something that can impact the board for this last combat, because I think it will be the last combat. Um, we could put a little bit more stats on Lightning Dragon. It's not the craziest idea. We could put a little bit more stats on everything or take the Hermes Magic Beans just to ensure that we get first attack. But looking at my opponent's treasures, I don't think that they have picked up some boots. So not going to worry about that. And I don't really find anything. Not picking up a River Wish Mermaid. That's a trap. Um, don't want to feed anything to the Kraken because we're just looking for a spell to cast. And then here, like, we could cast this, um, what's it called? Root Worm, but it's not worth it. And then even this Earthquake isn't really worth it because it looked like my opponent was on Dwarves. Now, Dwarves is a comp that can potentially give some scare to a Slay. Because if our Lightning Dragon attacks into like a backline Echo Wood or Doubly that's just too big, and they do have said Echo Wood, but we win the 66 percenter and find the Slay there, and now Lightning Dragon's going to get in again, find another 66 percenter, and at that point, Choop is going to be way too big for my opponent to even take down, so we'll get another batch of slays with Choop, and then of course my Jormagans are just absolutely massive. They're going to be at 2,500 already, well 25 and then half of that respectively, and uh, 27 now up to over 3,000 with this final batch of slays. So really, really strong stuff. I guess we do need this Jormungand to attack for the other Jormungand to get above 3,000 and uh, above 3,700. Wow, almost at 4,000. So really, really crazy stats there. And that's what you get for Force and Slay on Pan Shadow. I think that it is a very consistent comp. You know what? I'll, I'll take a look here on the screen. So this is sbbtracker.com slash data. It is a pretty good resource if you're curious which heroes are currently performing the best to help inform you about your decision when you're picking a hero at the start of the game. And you can filter from all matches, mythic only and non-mythic only. So if we take a look at all matches and sort by average placement, we're gonna see um, some really strong heroes here, Fallen Angel, Pied Piper, Wonder Waddle, Cursed King. Those are pretty consistent, but in average placement, you've gotta go all the way down to below in average performance. Now, looking at mythic players only, or no, this is all matches, but still, the average placement just for players that are using the tracker. So that's not going to be all players as well, but the average placement for all players, Pan Shadow falls below that. So it is a below average hero. However, if you look at crown percentage, which is the hero's ability to win, here's APOC. We looked at that uh, about a week or so ago, and I said how that is pretty strong. Pan Shadow cracking into the top five. Uh, mask a little bit silly to see here. I think that that is kind of weird, to be honest. And if you look at it, Mask doesn't have nearly as many games played as the other heroes. People are really sleeping on Mask in general, in my opinion. But it is a top five hero in terms of first place finishes. And if we take a look at Mythic data, that is still going to hold up pretty well here. We're going to see average placement, basically the same heroes, Wonder Waddle dropping a little bit here. And then again, we are going to see Pan Shadow way below average placement in terms of heroes. It's closer to the bottom. But if we take a look at crown percentage, again, pretty high. Uh, it's seventh this time, but still pretty high after some other really good heroes. Apoc through Cursed King, all very good. Skip the Time Skipper in an established pilot's hand. Also very good at churning out first place finishes as well. Um, Here's where you see those big numbers on APOC, where its crown percentage is just ridiculous, despite having a slightly lower average placement. But here's the important thing. Let's take a look at non-Mythic players only. Again, we'll filter over to average placement. We're still going to see these same top four heroes, F.A., Pied Piper, Zelhua, and Wonder Waddle. And if we try to find where Pan Shadow could be, again, it is going to be below average placement because this is where you have to 
say is average because this is where the data correlates. And even non-mythic players that are using Storybook Brawl Tracker are going to be better on average uh, because the average placement, oh, actually, I guess the average placement is 4.0 or 4, 4.08. Uh, so maybe that is a little bit worse because no, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The average placement should be, if everybody was uploading their data, should be 4.5 uh, because that's the average of, of 1 and 9. So obviously players using this are still overperforming as a whole, but we are definitely starting to see Pan Shadow really suffer here when you are taking a look at only non-mythic data. Oh, okay. I guess it actually still cracks into the top five, believe it or not, um, because there are just um, not that high of numbers when you look at non-mythic players, but uh, I didn't realize that. But still, um, that that actually speaks to it more than Pan Shadow is just a hero that I think everybody's sleeping on. It's really, really strong. Um, there are some other comps, like I said, that you can do with it, trees, and one thing that a lot of players have really enjoyed recently is just picking up all of the copycats, friendly spirits, and monster books that you find. That can also be a lot of fun. I don't know if it's as consistent. I haven't tested it myself personally because I just have so much fun playing this comp. So hopefully you guys had fun watching this one. That is going to be it for me today. Hopefully patch review coming soon. But that's it for me today. Thanks very much for watching. I'm No Legs Given. Peace.